from history. Welcome to another whirlwind adventure, looking at the weirdest and wackiest characters the annals of history have to offer. Friends, fasten your seatbelts because today we're diving into the decidedly peculiar life of John Murray Spear. Born in bustling Boston in 1804, Spear was spoon-fed a healthy serving of culture and intellect as an infant. You could say he was a Boston baby brimming with brilliance. As a young lad, little Johnny was baptized by Hosea Ballou, a bigwig in the Universalist Church. Uh, this baptism was more than just a splash in the pan. It shaped Spear's worldview, setting him on a path towards promoting the principles of peace, love, and, most importantly, equality for all people. So, from splashing in holy water to spreading wide the word of a universalist fervor, our boy was a real spiritual superstar. Let's march onward to 1830, when our protagonist was ordained as a minister in the Universalist Church. Our Universalist underdog was now an up-and-up reputable reverend spreading the gospel of universal love and acceptance. So Spear set the sphere on the straight and narrow path of righteousness, or so he thought. Ready for a twist? Buckle up, folks, because our cleric became a champion for change. Spear shocked society by siding with the slaves, playing a pivotal part in the Underground Railroad. This railroad had no steam engine, but it was a vehicle for victory nonetheless, helping hordes of enslaved hopefuls hightail it to freedom. In 1852, like a teenager rebelling against his parents, Spear decided to sever ties with the Universalist Church. He swiveled towards spiritualism, swapping sermons for seances. It was as if the straight-laced minister suddenly moonlighted as a medium, melding more and more with the mystical and macabre. Spear claimed to converse with a consortium of spirits, which he cleverly coined as the Association of Electrizers. To Spear, they weren't spooks, but sparks for social change. It was a seriously spooky calling, but our spiritualist didn't just chase ghosts, he changed the game. Among Spears' spirit squad were some big names, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, John Quincy Adams, and Benjamin Rush. This gaggle of ghosts gave Spear his spiritual street cred. Who needs a Ouija ball when you've got the founding fathers on speed dial, right? This phantom posse purportedly preached about a prophecy of greater freedom through, wait for it, technology. Spear, spurred on by spectral speeches, formulated a plan to fuse the fantastic with the functional, leading to one of the most peculiar projects of the period. In 1853, Spear and his spectral squad started constructing the new motive power, a mechanical messiah meant to manifest a magnificent new era of progress. It was a contraption conceived in a spook-induced stupor, a fantasy forged into a very real, very bizarre machine. The new motive power was pieced together from the pedestrian and the perplexing. Copper, zinc, magnets and a dining room table. We're talking pure alchemical ambition here, folks. Spear sure knew how he set up a surreal supper. Time for some table-side drama. Spear and a lady he labelled the New Mary tried to animate this audacious apparatus in an almost authentic birth ritual. They literally tried to give birth to a machine. One must wonder if they had a machine midwife at the ready. As you might have guessed, the mechanical messiah didn't muster much life. The contraption collapsed, reflecting the reality check most spiritualists sadly skipped. Our kooky congregation faced the harsh fact that faith, however fervent, fails to fuel fantastical furniture. Even after his mechanical mishap, Spear stayed smitten by spiritualism. Standing steadfast, he swapped his spirituality for a spot in the soothsaying business. He claimed to cure ailments and predict the future, asserting that his abilities were bestowed by benevolent bodiless beings. In 1872, a supposedly spirit-sent message marked the end of Spear's public endeavours. The spirit spoke, and Spear, like an obedient schoolboy, heeded their hallowed advice. The self-proclaimed psychic packed his paranormal paraphernalia and took a step back from the spiritual stage. 
Alas, in October 1887, our spiritual servant succumbed to the sands of time, drawing his last breath in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. His death marked the end of an era of eccentric exploration and earnest, albeit unusual, social reform. Our saga ends with Spear buried in the Mount Moriah Cemetery, a resting place deemed fitting for the spiritualist saunterer. In life, he might have walked a wacky path, but in death, he joined the ranks of remarkable souls, leaving a legacy that is nothing short of laughably legendary. Well, that's all we've got for today's episode of Weirdos from Histories. If you're giggling at these historical gaffes, or guffawing at our gallant hero's goof-ups, hit the like button. If you can't wait to meet more of history's most hilarious, hit subscribe. We've got a myriad of madcap misfits to marvel at. So, until we meet again in this virtual vortex of historical hilarity, leave a comment below and keep giggling at history's greatest goofballs.